Just a reminder that this and all my other videos are made for doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet. My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. So today, guys, I have something that I really went back and forth on for a while before I finally decided to just take the plunge. I've said many, many times that Aladdin is my favorite Disney movie, but Jasmine is not the princess that I go to aesthetically, I guess. However, last year, Aladdin turned 30, <laughs> along with me, and so they did a 30th anniversary Jasmine doll. It was originally a D23 doll, but then they released her for shopdisney.com, and I am being reflected away, so I'm not gonna hold the box up the whole time. And I went back and forth, she was $150. But honestly, guys, I mean, I've seen plenty of Jasmine dolls. We had the Ultimate Princess one. I have the Disney Fairy Tale one, which is like one of the first collector Jasmines they did. I've never liked a Jasmine doll so much. It's always been that I'm more interested in like a Belle or a Cinderella, but this Jasmine is the prettiest Jasmine that they have ever, ever done. And I was really hoping for a two-pack like they did with Belle and the Beast last year for their 30th anniversary. I really wanted an Aladdin and Jasmine, but for whatever reason, they just did Jasmine. But like I said, she is the most gorgeous Jasmine doll that they've ever made, in my opinion, at least. I love her face. I love the colors that they chose for her. They modeled the outfit after the outfit she only wears for like 10 seconds at the very end of the movie but it's beautiful she's beautiful and i said to myself as an aladdin fan can i let her go by without buying her in the end i had to do it here she is and she is a 17 inch doll so this box is ginormous i'm trying not to reflect too much of the light into the camera otherwise i'm gonna wind up in the shadow realm or something aladdin I'm sorry, I think they did you dirty by not including you in your namesake movie 30th anniversary celebration, but your girlfriend's really pretty. <laughs> well, technically they're married now, so your wife is very pretty. Anyway, so on the front here, it says Jasmine. It's in this beautiful blue color, and there's all kinds of peacock feather shapes in gold all around the box because that's a big part of Jasmine's theming is peacocks. It says collector doll, limited edition, one of 5,600. On the top here, it says Jasmine in gold with another peacock motif. Ugh. And then on the back, we have the little description, which I will now read to you guys. Celebrating 30 years of Disney's Aladdin, Disney artists are proud to present this limited edition Jasmine doll. Our enchanting princess soars above it all in pursuit of her dreams. Though Jasmine faces challenges from a villainous vizier, nothing can keep her down. She's able to find her independence and her one true love, Aladdin. Join our heroine with this keepsake, sure to sweep fans and collectors alike off their feet like a magic carpet ride. Here is a quick look at what she looks like in the box she's huge up here in the corner we have a little sticker that says aladdin 30 and has a picture of jasmine and she's a little bit in shadow the way that this box is but the backdrop back here is just agrabah and the palace is kind of over on the side here and of course it's nighttime. And like I said, this outfit is extremely reminiscent of her final outfit from the movie. And then my number is 1201 out of 5600. Let me get her out of this box. Since the little cover was kind of obstructive, I wanted to give you guys a better look of what she looks like in the backdrop. I know some people will leave their dolls like this and just take off the plastic part so that you can see them better. So uh, if you had any interest in getting her, this is what she would look like if you just had her without the plastic sleeve on the outside. I love the background. It's gorgeous. Oh my God. Anyway, now, continuing to unbox her. Okay guys, so Jasmine is free and like, look how huge she is. There's something so nice about the 17 inch Disney dolls that they have this extra weight to them. They're just nice to hold because they're big and I don't know, I guess for an adult collector who has bigger hands, it feels more filling in your big hands. <laughs> but she was difficult to get out. 
as usual. I mean, mostly it was twist ties, but we had some plastic ties at the bottom of the skirt and some at the back of the head, which I hate. Especially on a collector doll, I don't want to be ripping the head or trying to cut into the hair to get rid of the other end of the plastic tie. It's very frustrating. I wish they would stop doing that. But anyway, she is free and she is beautiful. Let us take her from top to bottom so you guys can see for yourself. Now, like I said, this Jasmine has the prettiest face and I don't have any of the newer Jasmine dolls, even the regular Playline dolls from the Disney store to know whether or not this is the same mold grown or if this is something they've used before. She's just really, really pretty and definitely prettier in my opinion than the Ultimate Princess one that they did. Well, that one also had the problem of the shimmer skin. She does not. She has nice matte skin in a gorgeous dark color. And I think it's her eyebrows too, because Jasmine is a very sassy character. They tend to give her either a slanted brow or the one raised brow that they do with a lot of Disney collector dolls because it shows off her attitude. So the eyebrows, I think, have made a big difference she looks a lot sweeter, more thoughtful and reflective. I like the softness of her face. It's not something you see a lot on Jasmine. And if we look at the details, of course, she has her brown eyes. She has a really dark red lipstick that is a little bit glossy. If we tilt it to the light, you can see that. And then she's got purple and gold eyeliner, big rooted lashes. She's just absolutely beautiful. Then if we look at her earrings, all of her jewelry is metal. So her earrings are a teardrop shape. We've got a peacock feather right at the bottom and a big blue jewel in the middle. And then she has a matching gold necklace with a blue jewel. And there's a couple of smaller ones on either side. And I love that they use the metal and not just electroplated plastic or anything because it really makes it a lot shinier and of course it elevates the quality on a doll that is way more expensive <laughs> than your average Disney doll plus she's a 17 inch doll so that adds in even more opportunities to make really extra fancy details plus if you look even closer at the necklace you can see a little hidden peacock feather motif next to the main jewel. I do want to look at her hair too. Now, Jasmine's traditional hairstyle is a bubble braid and that's kind of here. It's hidden in the middle, so they pulled her into a half up, half down. The bubble braid is the half up part, but it's got a lot of gel and then she's got all of her extra hair down here also super crunchy. Now, normally I wouldn't want to wash a collector doll like this because usually the hair is fine or if it's in a really intricate hairstyle that you wouldn't take down anyway. I would like to attempt to wash this because I want it to be softer, you know? So maybe I could put a piece or two over her shoulder or something. I don't know how I'm going to pose her when I display her, but this is not as nice with all the gel. I'm not really into the gel for a long flowing kind of hairstyle, you know, it just looks messy. The hair, of course, besides that is really nice quality. It feels like Saran, I believe. And then we can look at her outfit. So as a whole, it's very much the same silhouette as her main outfit from the movie. We've got the two piece and the parachute pants at the bottom, but with the addition here of this overskirt and this little stole scarf thing around her arms. And of course it's in a different color. And this purple, it's super gorgeous. Now on the camera, at least from what I'm seeing on the preview screen, it looks more indigo. It's a bluer purple, but it's more purple in person. I don't know, blue and purple are just, they don't really work well on my camera for some reason. They always come out looking like a shade they shouldn't. Just keep in mind that she's more purple than you think. So let's look at each part of it. 
The bodice here is purple satin and all of the gold stitching is actual stitching. It lines the sweetheart neckline as well as the bottom in this really fancy pattern. And we have some gold trim on the cap sleeves is not stitching. It's kind of like a little scallop trim. And also that scallop trim follows along the back. There is a plunging line at the back. Oh, I just noticed that the stitching at the bottom of the shirt doesn't go to the back. You thought that we wouldn't see that because you thought I would keep it in the box, but you were wrong, Disney. <laughs> then we have the puffy sheer sleeves, which if you fully extend the sleeve and extend her arm, it's about a three quarter. And there is a lot of room to play around with it. There's an elastic at the end to help hold it, but you can bring them up farther if you wanted to, to give her an even puffier kind of sleeve or just leave it down. But it's nice because even when she has her elbow bent, it still looks really puffy and it's sheer. So you can definitely see her arm through it, but it's such a dark color too that it doesn't look like it's not there at all. I kind of like that. From far away, you can almost see it as solid. Anyway, while I have her arm out here, we have some metal bracelets. This one's a simple one, and then this one is a more detailed one. I'm trying to see. Yeah, they're really not any specific patterns. They're just fancy little designs in the metal. And she has more on this arm. So we have three that kind of look like little gold beads and they're all separate. And then another one that has crystals on it. And as you can see, she also has this sheer piece of chiffon that matches the sheer material of her sleeves. And they did put a plastic tie in here so that it would kind of form around the wrist and make it easier for it to stay on. Those are the only plastic ties that I'm going to leave on this doll because I want it to stay on her without me having to like wrap it a million times around her. This way I know it's going to stay nice and in place. And this piece, it's pretty long. It goes all the way down to her feet, even with all of this extra at the back so that you can lift her arms and it doesn't pull too much. She's not too limited in movement by having this around her wrists. She can still do some nice poses and adds just a little extra flowiness and motion to her outfit. And now I'm going to move her arms out of the way so that we can see the bottom half of her outfit. So to start with, we have this gold metal chain that goes around kind of like a belt, almost like it's holding the overskirt piece in place. And each clasp is this flower looking, leaf looking design. Doesn't really look like a peacock feather. It's more like a lotus flower or maybe it's supposed to be a jasmine flower. I don't know what a jasmine flower looks like, honestly. So pardon my ignorance at that. That's probably what it's supposed to be. I would assume. There is a purple satin trim at the top of the pants and the actual pants are made of, well, I don't really know how to describe this. It's a shiny fabric, not super shiny. So it's not a satin, it's not like a chino or something. It's almost like what formal pants or slacks would be made of if they were made for dolls. It's obviously not the thickness or quality of actual slacks, but that's what it's reminding me of, formal pant material. They are gathered at the ankle and pretty baggy and roomy, just like her actual harem pants. And then we have the overskirt, which takes her pants up to the next level. So she's wearing pants and a dress at the same time. And it is a panel skirt, if that is a thing, and has these peacock details that go all the way around. I'm going to show you one of them up close so you can see. It's all embroidered and there are different shapes and colors of rhinestones to decorate the peacock embroidery and I just love this so much especially because you know Jasmine like I said before is a very strong-willed and sassy character with a lot of attitude she is very much like a peacock she's proud she displays her plume 
she flaunts her colors and her personality and she's not afraid to show it and this is like her big old peacock tail even though female peacocks don't have the fancy tails but just look at this again look at the way that the rhinestones glitter in the light i love this and it just takes this outfit that again was shown for such a short little clip at the end of the movie and it takes it to another level and makes it its own thing and i will also point out that the inside side of the skirt is lined with satin so that you're not seeing all the underside of the embroidery. Finally, we get down to her shoes. We have these purple high-heeled strappy sandals with gold painted details on the front. Again, we've got a little bit of that peacock shaped motif for the gold parts. Now, I don't think that Jasmine in her universe would be wearing high heels necessarily. You know, she always had the flat gold shoes and it might've been nice to see some more heavily gold shoes rather than the purple with the gold accents, but I'm not mad at these shoes. They're the least important thing on this doll, I would say, to me, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna be looking at the shoes as much as I'm going to be looking at the details on her skirt or her face. Those are the best parts of her. The only thing that she came with is this stand. What am I supposed to do with this? It's not a saddle stand. It's not adjustable. I mean, what am I supposed to do with this? This, this is a terrible, terrible stand for this particular doll. And that is basically Jasmine. I mean, her outfit is simple, but they took the simplicity of it and they elevated it quite a bit. They added a lot of metal jewelry, which I really appreciate. One thing I'll say that the Ultimate Princess Belle kind of lacked was jewelry. I realized after the fact didn't really have anything besides the earrings and the earrings were not even really metal. They were just the little tassels. The fact that she comes with all of this jewelry, especially because Jasmine did wear a lot of jewelry being an Arabian princess, I appreciate that they made it metal and that she has a lot of it. I love all the little rhinestone details and I love that even though you wouldn't see the back of this skirt, the whole thing is super detailed. Oh, I didn't even point out the fact that the center one back here is even more detailed than the side ones. Look, it's got the extra flourishes of embroidery. Kind of wish I could find a way to make that visible from the front. But yes, she is just gorgeous. And again, I love the face. I love that they gave her this softer look. I think it goes really well with the inspiration of this outfit being that it's at the end of the movie where she's flying away with Aladdin and she's like not thinking about her having to fight for her independence and everything and she's just happy and so she has this nice soft sweet happy face because she finally found her true love also I, I might as well just point out that she does have really good articulation too so I'm gonna have fun posing her she has the head the shoulder the elbow the wrist a twist at the waist hip and knee and it's gonna be easier too to make use of her hip joints because she's not wearing a dress. Would I say she is 100% worth the $150? I mean, they did use really nice materials. She is a 17 inch doll rather than a 12 inch. I mean, for the extra $20 from the Ultimate Princess, you're getting a bigger doll and more metal jewelry and everything. So I guess I'm thinking in terms of like wow factor and everything. To me, she wowed me because of her face, because of her outfit and colors and everything, and because of what Aladdin the movie means to me. So I would say if you're like a huge, huge Aladdin fan, you will really, really love this doll. Would I have liked her at the price point of the Ultimate Princess celebration? Yes, but even that was a hundred and some, 129 or whatever. And if she does go on sale at any point, if she doesn't sell out before they clearance her, then definitely go for it. <laughs> you have more patience than I do. I really thought I was gonna make a lot more movie references. Oh well, sorry Robin Williams. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, a whole new world, a whole new doll for you and me.